Up first, the hand-squeezed juicy IPA. Cheers. So the hand squeezed. Yeah, that's our uh, hand squeezed juicy IPA. We knew we were gonna have to come out of the gate with a, a juicy or a New England style IPA. And in small batch systems, we took a lot of time in figuring out all of the Michigan proprietary hops and what their different flavor profiles were. So we had a, a pretty big commitment to using and sourcing local as much as we could, when we could, and when it made possible. So this is a blend of four of our favorite uh, Michigan proprietary hops. Mackinac, Hydra, Bergamot, and Paradigm. And as much as we get, we try to get from Pure Minton Hops, which is about four miles away from us right here in Coopersville. Why is it important to be able to source locally like that, especially hyper-locally, all specifically Michigan? I think uh, it comes, some of it comes from my background and growing up in a, in a small business family, um, dri driving around and seeing my dad look at people that bought RVs and wondering why they didn't buy them from them and that kind of sets it in your head that it's important to support the businesses that are in and around you. Second, the ties of the room together, Pale Porter. So this one, the Pale Porter, mm -hmm. it was kind of, when I first saw that, I was like, it's kind of an oxymoron almost. Yeah. Like, explain that to me. So it's a style that's just, I don't even know if it's a style. Um, I don't know if it's been officially put into the, the book as a style, but this popular idea of, you know, uh, New Holland has, a, uh, has their white stout, um, Parent has Parent Blonde, and you kind of see that where these beers that are light in color, light in body, but, you know, the trick of the eye, if you close your eyes, it'd almost be like you're drinking a dark beer. The name comes from the wainscoting that you see around uh, the outside. This is one of the last beers that we developed in small batch. And our kegerator was out here in the tap room um, while we were gluing all of the wainscoting to the wall. And my GM is a big fan of the Big Lebowski. And we just kept talking about how the wainscoting was tying the room together. And we just couldn't get a name for this beer. And then it just like made a ton of sense one day. So that's kind of where all that comes from. And lastly, it was all a cream, cream ale. Cheers. Cheers. I filled mine up pretty high. <laughs> <laughs> So this one, it was all a cream, mm -hmm. obviously a reference to uh, the Biggie song, it was yeah. all a dream, but it's an acronym. Mm -hmm. Tell me about that acronym. Yeah, so that an acronym, um, also in the 90s in hip hop, Wu-Tang had one of their biggest hits, which was an acronym called Cream, and it stood for Cash Rules Everything Around Me. So we kind of took those two hip hop songs, but we always wanted a beer that we were going to utilize to give back to the community in some form or fashion. The CRM for us stands for Coopersville Recreation, Education, Arts, and Music. So every quarter we take um, a look at the sales on that beer and find something in the community, kind of in either one of those or any one of those veins that we want to get ourselves involved in and try to give back. Um, and what was it that time around? Yeah, so we've only been open uh, since the end of April on 420 this year, so we've only had the one quarter, and now we've got the second quarter just recently under our belt. But the first quarter, um, there was a local family who um, unfortunately lost their, their father and husband and their six kids, and um, it, was, it was pretty tragic. So we took the first quarter sales from that and added on to it on a, on a fundraiser we did that we eventually ended up raising over $14,000 for the family. For more episodes of Hops with Hey Luke, head over to the Watch tab on woodtv.com.